Next, oysters. There's always been differing opinions about when you eat these slippery little suckers. Can you eat oysters all year round? Yes. No. I don't know. Can you? Have you ever heard the old wives' tale that oysters are best eaten in a month that contains an R? No, I've never heard that one. So... I've heard of it, but I have no idea why. Cheers. Cheers. Oh! <laughs> mm. Oh, God. <laughs> Beautiful. But the Don't husband worry. will get a good snog when I get home. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Don't oh, get yeah. the engine started. Oh, more than the engines. <laughs> My work here is done. Have a great day, guys. <laughs> Perhaps we could all do with a daily dose of oysters. I'm popping over the channel to Britain's oyster farming capital. Any oysters down there? Hello, Jersey. Just came in on that dinky little plane there. Morning. Good morning, Kate. John and Shannon LaSala are big players in the oyster farming industry. Where are your oysters, John? They're just down there, half a mile down the beach, so we just need a short tractor ride. Jersey's east coast is ideal for farming oysters. Right, this is where we work. It's a nice day at the office. <gasps> it boasts some of the cleanest waters in Europe, and a huge tidal range means every time the tide goes out, vast stretches of beach are revealed. And this is incredible. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting out here. So these are all oysters. Oysters as far as the eye can see. Just about, yes, yeah. There's about 100 <laughs> tonnes in this area. 100 tonnes? There's about 100 tonnes here, which would be about a million oysters. One uh, million oysters? Yeah. Really? Each of these bags contains around 180 oysters. Laid out on these oyster beds, they feed on the algae-rich sea every time the tide comes in. Can we get in a bag and have a closer yes, look? Yes, of course. These are about two years old, and they're just about ready for sale. Two years old? It takes two years to get it that big. Yeah, they grow very quickly, though. So what type of oyster are these? Uh, that's a Japanese Pacific oyster. So we're stood in the middle of the English Channel, and yet all your oysters are from the Pacific? Originally, yes. Japanese Pacific oysters are also known as rock oysters, and we Brits eat over 15 million of them every year. Why do you choose to grow an oyster that isn't native to Jersey? Um, there was no choice. The uh, natural flat oyster that used to grow in these waters, they died out very suddenly. Oh, I can't wait to try one, John. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful oyster. They're lovely, aren't they? Let's have a little try. We're in October, so it should be safe. Delicious. Very good, aren't they? Mmm. Really good. So what does John reckon to all these cautionary tales? So tell me about this old wives' tale. Why is it the case that some people tell you oysters should only be eaten in a month which contains an R? Sometimes old wives' tales have got an element of truth in them. Um, as the summer months warm up, the oysters will spawn. It's a natural thing for them to do. Spawning is when the oyster reproduces, releasing eggs or sperm. And are they kind of milky when they're in there? When they're about to, on the point of spawning, yes. They go very milky and it looks like milk. You can still eat it, it won't hurt you, but it doesn't taste quite so good either. So, historically, we didn't eat oysters from May until the end of August because they just didn't taste that good. How come I see oysters available all year round? Um, well, some oysters... Um, a bread now that don't actually reproduce. So um, they won't spawn in the summer months. Huh? <laughs> so if this oyster never has babies, I'm a bit confused. How does it even exist? I think that's a question for the hatchery. <laughs> <laughs> How do you produce an animal that can't reproduce? The more I think about it, the weirder it gets. John sent me to northwest France, to the hatchery that supplies him with these sterile oysters. Bonjour. Nice to meet you. Jeremy Lois and his colleagues are pioneers in the field of oyster breeding. Look at those. Gosh, they're minuscule, aren't they? So right here, this is a sterile oyster yep. that will never reproduce in its life. Never. These baby sterile oysters, when mature, can be eaten in any month of the year. You've ultimately created an oyster which is like a satsuma without seeds. Yeah, it's kind of a revolution for the oyster industry. This incredible process begins with a normal, fertile female oyster. So you take an oyster you find in nature, 
Like this one. Like this one? The female. To breed with a tetraploid because uh, tetraploids are males. Tetraploids? Yeah. That sounds like the stuff of science fiction. Tetraploids are genetically bred male oysters, which only produce sterile offspring. Much like a farm might receive stud sperm from some kind of top cattle that's yeah. somewhere in the world, and you breed them together. That's it. These sterile baby oysters are then raised on the finest algae and held in vast nurseries. How many oysters have you got in here? 500 million oysters inside this building. Jeez. At five months old, they are ready to be shipped to farms all over the world. Look at those. Perfectly formed, just a miniature version. 